guys, in today's video, I'm hopefully going to clarify for you all some of the key differences between salicylic acid and benzoyl peroxide. These are both active ingredients that are FDA approved for the treatment of acne and are sold as FDA approved over-the-counter acne medications. You will find them in washes for acne as well as toners, leave-on gels, spot treatments, masks, etc. I have several videos talking about these ingredients and reviewing products with these ingredients, but I get a lot of questions from you guys. Well, which ingredient is better? Which one works better? Which one will take care of my, um, of my blackheads better? Benzoyl peroxide or salicylic acid? So in today's video, I'm hopefully gonna clarify that. And also, you know, we use both salicylic acid and benzoyl peroxide off-label, and that means for things that are, it is not, they are not FDA approved for, we use these ingredients as dermatologists off-label for a variety of other things. So I'm gonna talk about those in today's video as well. It's not just about acne. But coming back to acne, you have to remember kind of the four components of acne pathogenesis. Number one is going to be inflammation in the skin. That's actually recently been shown to probably be one of the first, first offenders in the skin before anything else shows up on the scene. There's going to be some degree of inflammation around the pore that kicks acne off. There's also a problem with the skin cells lining the pore. They proliferate at kind of an abnormal rate and are unnecessarily sticky. So they plug up the pore and that leads to what is called a microcomedone that then turns into a comedone. And in other words, blackheads and whiteheads. The third part of acne pathogenesis is going to be the comfort level and abundance of a little bacteria that lives down in the pore called Cutibacterium acnes. This guy used to be called Propionibacterium acnes and he has since been renamed. But that bacteria lives in the pore and leads to inflammation in the pore and drives acne. The fourth component of acne pathogenesis is sebum, oil. Within the pore, our oil gland is making oil that coats the surface of our skin and hydrates it. It's important for skin barrier function. But with, in people with acne, there can be what's called uh, seborrhea or increased oil production. And so that contributes to acne pathogenesis. That little bacteria that lives down there chews up our oil, the oil uh, from our sebaceous gland and releases these inflammatory breakdown products that further contribute to acne. So those are some of the four key components of how acne uh, progresses and what needs to be addressed uh, with treatment. Now, getting back to the active ingredients. Salicylic acid, what is it? Salicylic acid is a carboxylic acid that is lipophilic, meaning it loves oil and grease. It concentrates on the oily surfaces of our skin, like our forehead, our nose, and namely, it concentrates within our pore, and that's exactly where it needs to go in order to help in addressing the pathogenesis of acne. So it's has a keen predilection for going there. What does it do once it gets there? Its key strength in the treatment of acne is that it decreases corneocyte cohesion. So remember I told you that the within the pore, the skin cells proliferate and get kind of stuck together. Salicylic acid will help unstick that, that, that goop and help in basically keeping pores from becoming clogged. In other words, it is a great treatment for blackheads and whiteheads as well as acne in general. Blackheads and whiteheads, I'll remind you, are part of acne pathogenesis, but sometimes they can occur on their own without some of the other characteristic lesions of acne. Because salicylic acid has such an affinity for the oily surfaces of our skin, it actually doesn't do too much to the rest of the surface of our skin in between the pores, what's called the stratum corneum, the stuff on the very top layer of the skin. Remember, the pore is kind of down deep, but on top you have, you have the stratum corneum which is like a basket weave or a roof of our skin. And salicylic acid does not have as much of an affinity for sticking around in the top layer of our skin. So while it does a great job exfoliating within our pore, it's less aggressive at exfoliating the rest of our, our skin structures. And so it tends to sting less than some other exfoliants and comedolytics, and it tends to be less irritating and slightly easier to, to tolerate in, compar in comparison to many other acne medications. In addition to being uh, comedolytic, salicylic acid has modest anti-inflammatory properties, and it also has mild antibacterial properties. And believe it or not, it is protective against UVB. It has some UVB blocking uh, ability because of its ring-like structure. 
Salicylic acid also, when you put it on your skin, um, it will auto neutralize after a while and form a crystal, crystals. And those crystals are then rinsed off of the surface of the skin. They don't stay on there. However, the crystals do remain behind in your pore and exert ongoing uh, comedolytic effect and anti-inflammatory effect. So salicylic acid has a, a nice outcome in that it kind of concentrates in your pores and stays there for a prolonged period of time without it really affecting the other structures of your skin. What about benzoyl peroxide? Benzoyl peroxide is an antibacterial ingredient. Benzoyl peroxide goes to work at cutibacterium acnes and can reduce the burden of cutibacterium acnes in the skin. That is its greatest strength. How does it do this? It oxidizes proteins on the surface of that bacteria and kills it. But it does this and, and kills the bacteria, but it's a little bit more uh, profound than that, and that unlike other antibiotics, no bacterial resistance has been demonstrated to benzoyl peroxide to date. So it's a much safer anti antibiotic to be putting on your skin as opposed to other, other antibiotics that are prescribed either topically or orally for acne. Uh, the bacteria will not become resistant to, to this ingredient. Even better, if you are on one of those other antibiotics, whether they be topical or oral, using it, using those alongside benzoyl peroxide will reduce the risk that the bacteria on your skin will become resistant to those ingredients. So, so benzoyl peroxide is really beneficial in treating bacterial diseases and addressing the bacterial component of acne. Like salicylic acid, benzoyl peroxide is also uh, comedolytic. It does not, however, have the same uh, preferential localization to the pore, while it does concentrate there, it also will affect the other structures of the skin. So it will uh, result in a lot more irritation and peeling. If you've ever used benzoyl peroxide, it's very drying and very irritating. And benzoyl peroxide is also, like salicylic acid, anti-inflammatory. Unlike salicylic acid, benzoyl peroxide is not going to offer any protection against ultraviolet radiation or UVB. When benzoyl peroxide is applied to the surface of the skin, it's actually broken down by cysteine in the skin into something called benzoic acid, which is in a lot of foods incidentally, so it's very, very safe. It's not absorbed into the body at, at, at any degree. And daily use of a 10% benzoyl peroxide containing product has been shown to reduce the burden of cutibacterium acne within the pore by 98%. I already alluded to the fact that benzoyl peroxide is much more irritating than salicylic acid. The other thing that you probably know already if you've ever used benzoyl peroxide is that if you use a leave-on benzoyl peroxide product, it will bleach the fabric. That doesn't happen with salicylic acid, but it does happen with benzoyl peroxide. So that is a side effect that people do not like. So you guys wanna know which one is better? Which one is better for acne? Well, honestly, it's not that simple. It's not a, a yes or no. Salicylic acid does a better job in treating the, the uh, plugged up pore part of acne, the keratinocyte cohesion issue going on within the pore and exerting long-term control against blackheads and whiteheads than benzoyl peroxide. But benzoyl peroxide does that as well. Benzoyl peroxide is much is a much better antibacterial ingredient than salicylic acid. So it's really going to tackle the cutibacterium acnes component of, of acne much better than salicylic acid does. And while it may seem odd that benzoyl peroxide is so irritating, it also is probably a better anti-inflammatory ingredient in comparison to salicylic acid. I say this because benzoyl peroxide is superior in the treatment of the more inflammatory types of acne in comparison to salicylic acid. So acne that consists of a lot of red, painful bumps, tender nodules, tends to uh, respond better to benzoyl peroxide than salicylic acid. But for many patients, they can't hack benzoyl peroxide whatsoever. It doesn't work for them. And so salicylic acid does the job just fine. And for a lot of patients, we actually combine both ingredients, uh, either together, one right after the other, or in kind of a alternating fashion. So for example, it's not unusual to advise a patient to use a benzoyl peroxide wash in the shower and then leave on a salicylic acid product 
in the evening or use a benzoyl peroxide wash in the evening and a salicylic acid wash in the morning, uh, that kind of thing. Or alternate every other day and you may want this spelled out, but honestly, there's no magic formula. It's very nuanced to the individual patient um, and so, you know, there, it's, not a, it's not a cookbook formula, in other words, as to which combination and which forms of the ingredient, whether it be washes or leave-on products, are going to work well for you. So those are the strengths of each ingredient in terms of acne, but what about some of these other, other conditions that I alluded to earlier? Um, okay, so salicylic acid is a great treatment. Obviously, I mentioned blackheads and whiteheads, you know, that, that is part of acne, but some people just have those by themselves alone. They just have blackheads and whiteheads, and they don't really feel as though they have acne because they're not bothered by the painful bumps and whatnot. Um, so it's, it's, it's going to be your go-to for breaking up blackheads and whiteheads over benzoyl peroxide for sure. And another thing that salicylic acid will be helpful for, that benzoyl peroxide is not, is treating diseases of hyperpigmentation, namely post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. So if you're someone whose acne, for example, heals with a dark mark, salicylic acid is going to be a good ingredient for you to consider using um, because not only does it stay in that pore and can exert ongoing acne control, but it also will help to um, brighten up the hyperpigmentation and reduce the risk of post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. Um, all right. Also, another plus of salicylic acid over benzoyl peroxide is that you could also think of it as an anti-aging ingredient. It kind of normalizes skin cell uh, biology and turnover to a certain extent, although not in the same way that a retinoid would, but it exfoliates sun-damaged skin cells, and it's got that little bit of UVB protective ability. So if you're thinking of an anti-aging ingredient, it's going to be salicylic acid. It's not going to be benzoyl peroxide. He doesn't really do offer much for anti-aging. Salicylic acid is not going to do anything, however, for improving wrinkles and fine lines per se. That's going to be more of your alpha hydroxy acids and your retinoids. And when I say alpha hydroxy acids, I'm talking about what you get in an office chemical peel, not what you get in an over-the-counter product. They're just not the right strengths to be to to do that kind of to to exert that kind of change in the skin. Uh, you need an in-office peel. Uh, but salicylic acid is not really going to fix the fine lines and wrinkles, but it is helpful for improving the dispigmentation associated with with um, with photo aging. Salicylic acid is also what you will find in many wart treatments. It's a great treatment for warts because warts, whether they be on the hands, feet, wherever, um, they have this big mound of sticky skin cells on top of, of uh, stratum corneum. And salicylic acid helps to start to dissolve some of that. Salicylic acid also is a great treatment for dandruff. You will see it in a lot of anti-dandruff shampoos because it is a keratolytic. It dissolves the, the scaly stuff. And dandruff is related to another condition called seborrheic dermatitis. And so salicylic acid is also a great ingredient if you have seborrheic dermatitis on the face. Those greasy patches, a lot of people, a lot of people who say they have combination skin may actually, you know, it may actually be that you have seborrheic dermatitis. It's kind of, when I hear combination skin, I always think of seborrheic dermatitis as a dermatologist because those, that disease, you have oily, greasy kind of patches, but you also have dry patches with flakiness and scaliness and you have redness. Benzoyl peroxide, not so much. It's not a bacterial disease. It is a disease of seborrhea. And uh, salicylic acid is good at reducing oil production to a certain extent. So back to benzoyl peroxide. Is it only good for acne? No. Benzoyl peroxide is another great ingredient for a lot of other things. Um, what is it good for? Remember, its strength is it's an antibacterial. I mean, that's really where its strength lies. An antibacterial for which bacteria do not become resistant to. So for a physician, for as a dermatologist, it's great. The last thing we want is for patients to develop bacterial resistance to an antibiotic. So benzoyl peroxide is great for that. Um, so it can be used for other diseases for which there's some kind of little bacterial component that drives the disease. Folliculitis. 
Um, those itchy bumps that can happen in your scalp or anywhere on your body. I have a video on this condition, but a lot of times folliculitis is due to bacteria trickling down into the hair follicle and causing these little itchy bumps. It's a similar to acne, although not the same pathogenesis, totally different, but very kind of similar inciting events and benzoyl peroxide works well. Another skin condition with painful inflammatory bumps that localize around hair follicles is hydradenitis superativa. Those painful bumps in the groin, armpits, under the breasts, under the abdo abdominal folds. Benzoyl peroxide can help in controlling the bacterial burden on the surface of the skin and also reducing inflammation that drives that disease. But do know, hydradenitis superativa is not a, an infectious disease but bacteria on the surface of the skin that colonize moist areas like in the groin area and the armpits, uh, they, get, they just get comfortable there and they can actually push the disease to, to, to get worse, but they're not, the, they're not the cause of that disease. I want, I want you to understand that. You don't have an infection if you have hydradenitis hydride, superativa, um, but bacteria that normally live on the surface of the skin, they definitely can contribute to it. So using benzoyl peroxide helps to kind of normalize that bacterial burden in that disease. Also very good for ingrown hairs, whether they be in the beard area or in the groin area related to bikini waxes or shaving. Benzoyl peroxide is great for, for that condition because it too is kind of, you know, similar in a sense to some of the same features of what leads to acne. You've got inflammation around the, the pore, this time inflammation due to hair removal or the hair growing back into the skin and causing a foreign body reaction that leads to the bump. Uh, so benzoyl peroxide helps with reduce that inflammation. It helps reduce bacteria in the skin that can further, you know, get excited in the face of that inflammation and worsen the disease. And it also uh, will help in exfoliating the skin so that it reduces the chance that, that the hair that's been shaved will creep back into the skin, puncture down and cause that, that bump. So it's a great treatment for for ingrown hairs. Folliculitis, pseudofolliculitis barbae is the medical term for ingrown hairs in the beard area that men get. Benzoyl peroxide is great. Lather in a wash form, lather to the beard area, left on the skin for a few minutes and then rinsed off uh, before shaving uh, can be a great way to control ingrown hairs. Um, so yeah, frequently used for that. I have a video on ingrown hairs, by the way. So I mentioned benzoyl peroxide was not great for hyperpigmentation diseases like post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. But there is one very unusual skin disease that um, looks a little bit like tinea versicolor. I've never talked about it before because it's not super common, but it's called uh, progressive macular hypomelanosis. It uh, is just little white patches on the skin, like on the back or on the trunk. And we've learned that this skin disease is caused by cutibacterium acnes. So the way to know if, if that's what you've got, because it does kind of look an awful lot like tinea versicolor, the way a dermatologist can figure this out is to examine your skin um, in the dark using a what's called a woods lamp because cutibacterium acnes has a characteristic fluorescence and tinea, the, the yeast that causes tinea versicolor fluoresces another color, so that can help distinguish it. And while salicylic acid would be helpful for, for things due to tinea versicolor, benzoyl peroxide is actually going to be helpful for things related to cutibacterium acnes and therefore is a treatment for progressive macular hypomelanosis. Again, pretty, pretty not super common, but honestly it may be more common because it's fairly, it's been described fairly recently. So who, you know, we really don't know how common it is. Those are some of the things that benzoyl peroxide and salicylic acid are good for. And, you know, hopefully you can kind of understand the strengths of what each ingredient does and why it works so well for certain situations. But ultimately, it's best left up to your treating healthcare provider and, and you uh, because it is a journey. You know, they call it the art of medicine for a reason. It involves, you know, kind of talking with the patient, seeing what's been working, and it's never a one size fits all approach. It's not cook cookbook. So I hope this video was helpful and kind of going over the differences between benzoyl peroxide, salicylic acid. Hopefully you learned a ton about all the different ways that each ingredient can be used and is, you know, used in dermatology and, you know, some 
pluses and minuses are the two. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.